From the very first shot of the original announced trailer back in 2017, Sucker Punch made it clear that Ghost of Tsushima was a historical game, and plenty of viewers with an understanding of Japanese history quickly understood why. In 1274, the Japanese island of Tsushima was invaded by a Mongolian army under the direction of Kublai Khan en route to mainland Japan. It was clear that Sucker Punch was going to borrow some narrative and thematic elements from the real invasion. What wasn't clear, however, was how historically accurate the story would be. Would it only reflect the invasion and date and place alone, or would its influences go even further than that? To find out, let's take a look at the real history of Ghost of Tsushima. On the evening of November 4th, 1274, a fleet of Mongol invaders were spotted in the sea near Tsushima Island. This gave enough time for So Sukekuni, the Jitodai or Deputy Jito of Tsushima, to organize a defense. Alongside 80 mounted samurai and their followers, Sukekuni took position on the beach at Komoda. He brought an interpreter with him to try and understand the intentions of the Mongols, but they had no desire to negotiate, immediately attacking with arrows as over 1,000 Mongol warriors reached the land. In Ghost of Tsushima, the island's Jito, Lord Shimura, sets up a defense at Komoda Beach with the five samurai clans, making up a total of 80 mounted samurai. Shimura sends his best warrior, Lord Harunobu Adachi, to confront the Mongols and demand to fight their best warrior, but Koten Khan responds by setting him on fire and beheading him, immediately prompting the battle to begin. In real life, more than half of Sukekuni's followers died at the beach, and he led a band towards the Mongol forces, where he ultimately fell. In the game, most of Tsushima's samurai die at the beach, and Lord Shimura is captured by the Mongols. Shimura's nephew, Jin Sakai, narrowly escapes death, and sets out to save his uncle. Before Sukekuni died, he sent two men, Kotaro and Hijiro, to slip past the Mongol ships and take a message to Dezaifu, on the Japanese mainland, that the war had started. In the game, Shimura and Jin send two samurai, Kotaro and Jiro, along with a pirate named Goro, to sail past the Mongol armada and send a message to the mainland, requesting additional samurai warriors. Both in real life and the game, the Mongols spent several days capturing the island of Tsushima, setting fire to nearby buildings and killing most of their inhabitants. In real life, they moved on from the island to the nearby Iki, and eventually to mainland Japan, where they are suspected to have been pushed out by a large storm. In the game, they capture most of the island and plan to head towards the mainland, but are ultimately defeated by the samurai and shogun in the midst of a large storm. The initial battle between the Mongols and Japanese was the first time their contrasting fighting tactics had really been documented. In the game, the primary weapon of the samurai is the katana, but the word katana wasn't commonly used for battle weapons for about another 200 years. In the real invasion, Tachi swords were actually used against the Mongols. In fact, it was during these invasions that the Tachi was discovered to be inconvenient, as the thick and heavy blade made it difficult to fight several enemies in close combat, and its lack of flexibility made it easy to break or chip. In the game, Jin also has a Tanto along his katana, a smaller sword that he uses for particularly close combat. This was a common companion piece of the Tachi for the samurai at the time. Despite all this talk of swords, however, the main weapon of the samurai during the invasion was actually the bow, which is highly prevalent in the game but still feels secondary to the katana, although you can understand why considering how enjoyable the katana actually feels to use. The characters in the game use the bow correctly too, holding it above their head and moving their hands apart as they bring the bow down and draw the string back. One interesting weapon used in the game by Jin is that of a smoke bomb. What's interesting is that the use of the weapon may actually be historically accurate, though likely from the wrong side of the invasion. Some archaeological evidence suggests that pottery bombs were used by the Mongols off the coast of Japan, one of the earliest examples of gunpowder warfare, if not during this invasion then certainly during the one seven years later. Speaking of gunpowder warfare, the Mongols are suspected to have used cannons during the invasion, based on the mentions of a bell-shaped weapon that shot out thousands of iron balls and made the sound of a thunderclap. The in-game Mongols use cannons too, in this instance to burn down and destroy several towns and strongholds across the island of Tsushima. Another weapon that the game flips between nations is that of poison. In the game, Jin learns how to make poison from his caretaker, Yuriko, by using Wolfsbane. After Jin uses it to poison a large Mongol force, the Khan learns how to recreate it, and uses it against the people of Tsushima. In real life, however, the Mongols brought their own poison-tipped arrows to Japan during the invasion, crafted using a plant named Aconite, also known as Wolfsbane. 
They had other methods for gathering poison too, such as extracting it directly from the venom of a snake. Although the primary events behind the game's story are fairly close to real life, one of the main points of narrative tension in the game may actually be a historical inaccuracy. In Ghost of Tsushima, the samurai have a code. To honour their enemy in battle, face them directly, and treat them how they wish to be treated. It's a great point of tension for Jin, as he feels the need to use other tactics in order to defeat the Mongol threat and save the Japanese people, but he is met with discontent at every step by his uncle, who is adamant about following the traditional samurai code and defeating their enemy the honourable way. While this conflict is incredibly effective in the narrative, it doesn't really have historical precedence. The Tenet of Honour is not known to have been introduced to the Samurai Code, known as the Bushido, until at least the 14th century. The Samurai of the 13th century didn't typically discuss the same morals of modern Samurai, besides occasionally feelings of mercy, and instead focused on fearlessness toward their opponent in battle to protect their land and overwhelm the enemy. In 1900, Japanese author Nitobi Anazo wrote of the eight virtues of Bushido, one of which concerns the need to treat one's enemies with honour. More specifically, it notes that true warriors need not be cruel, nor should they need to prove their strength, but that they become respected by the way in which they deal with others. However, these virtues are not necessarily representative of all Bushido throughout history, having been published over 600 years after the battle at Tsushima, so the developers may have taken some creative liberties when implementing this code of honour in the game. Outside of the main story, there are plenty of other elements of the game inspired by or based on real historical objects or events. Across the island of Tsushima, Jin can discover 49 shrines dedicated to Inari, the kami or deity of agriculture and plenty. In the game, the shrines are represented by foxes, both real and in statue form. These shrines actually exist in real life too. The development of Inari shrines began in the 9th century, also intended to worship the deity Inari, who is more widely known to be the kami of foxes, fertility, tea, rice, sake, agriculture, industry, and general prosperity and success. And like the game, the entrances of these shrines are typically marked by images of foxes. Considering the size of the island, it's unlikely that there were or are 49 of these shrines on Tsushima, but they make for a fun collectible. Another collectible is the Sashimono Banner. In the game, these are represented as collectible banners originally worn by members of Tsushima's great clans. They work similarly in real life too, historically meant to be worn by soldiers in feudal Japan for easier identification during battle. They became most significant in the Sengoku period, the almost 150 year period in Japan of near constant war from the 15th to 17th century, though banners were certainly used during the first Mongol invasion as well. An interesting set of collectibles in the game are the singing crickets. They're said to be an early sign of autumn, prized for their singing and often caught to be kept in small cages. And this is largely true. Crickets were the primary symbols of autumn and were described as poetic and musical as early as the 10th century. As for keeping them in cages, there's pretty clear evidence that this was the case in China around the 8th century, so it's fairly feasible that such a sport had made its way to Japan by the 13th century. Full-time cricket trade didn't emerge as an occupation until the 17th century, however, and it largely disappeared after the 19th century. Interestingly, one of my favourite collectibles in the game is actually somewhat historically inaccurate. Throughout the island, Jin discovers locations where he can compose haikus, which are three-line poems with a syllable pattern of 575. However, at the time, the closest thing to a haiku was called a hoku. He uses the same syllable pattern, but only existed as the opening stanza of a different type of poem known as a renga, which would consist of one poet writing a hoku of 575, and then a different poet writing another two-line stanza of 77. The hoku didn't begin to appear as an independent poem until the 17th century, and it wasn't until the late 19th century that the name was changed to haiku. So while haikus technically did exist in 1274, they were written in a very different method than they appear in the game. Sucker Punch clearly put a lot of work into creating the world of Ghost of Tsushima, and this is largely reflected in their demonstration of real historical items and events. The Mongol invasions of Japan, both of which began with an attack on the island of Tsushima, are a significant event in Japanese and Mongol history, and Sucker Punch has portrayed it beautifully and respectfully within the game. Even more than this though is the studio's work at crafting a world full of old Japanese traditions that are generally pretty historically accurate. And when they're not, it's usually only because of the time period, 
Everything mentioned is historically significant to Japan in some way. Instead of being as nitpicky as I am and making a one-to-one -one copy of Tsushima in 1274, the developers have handpicked some of the best Japanese traditions from history and represented them beautifully. And that, among many other things, is one of the main reasons that I love Ghost of Tsushima.